opening scene, Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. Come check it out. Come on, Franklin. It's going to be fun. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another filming locations video. It sounds really weird to say that because I've only done one filming location for this channel so far. Originally, I had intended to do a lot more sooner. So, huge delay, but uh, anyway, trying to make up for it today with a really cool filming location um, from 1974's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Shocker, I know. Um, so anyway, I went to the family house in Kingsland. Also went by the Baghdad Cemetery in Leander to get some shots from the opening scene of Chainsaw Massacre. So. That's really all the setup I have. I was going to also try to go by the sister house. If some of you are not familiar with that, it's in Georgetown. It's a replica of the family house. It's now a orthodontist office. Um, traffic was not letting me get back to Georgetown from Leander. So that didn't happen. So I might share some still photos from when I went a few years ago to the sister house, as well as maybe post the information from Tim H from texaschainsawmassacre.net that gives a very vivid history and lots of other cool information and photos from not just the original movie, but from all the movies. So please go check out Tim H's website, texaschainsawmassacre.net. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell. I'm trying to do more videos more often. So, But either way, you're not going to get a ton of notifications because right now it's mostly horror conventions and there's not another one coming up till the end of this month. So... It'll be a while before you get another notification, but I would really appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe notifications and like this video if you like it. If you don't like it, downvote it or whatever it's called. But anyway, um, hope you enjoy the video and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks. Robbing in Texas is this hour's top news story. An informant led officers of the Muerto County Sheriff's Department. Hey YouTube, just welcome back to another video. Room, Thanks Texas for community. clicking on this, first of all. Um, it's been forever since I've done a filming location video, so I couldn't think of a better place to do than my favorite filming location in the great state of Texas. So, surprise, we're in Kingsland. And we're at the family house. Not where the movie was shot, but where the house lives now. There it is. It's under new management slash ownership. So the new name is Hooper's, which is appropriate for uh, Toby Hooper. Pretty awesome that uh, you got the branding up there over the bar. So I'm going to do a little bit of a walk around and then go inside and have some brunch and try to film a little bit without disturbing anybody. So join me. But pretty cool approach up to the house. Looks just like it did in the movie. So cool. I highly suggest you come to see this place. I'm gonna walk around this way so I can get a shot of the new Hooper sign. A lot has changed since I've been here. I've been here several times, but I've never videoed any of it. I think I started coming here in like 2009. Um, Love to come see this lit up at night. They do have events here, like uh, where they'll screen the movie, I think out probably out here on the lawn, the courtyard, which would be super cool to watch the movie right in front of the house. So I'm gonna see if I can just walk around and then see what else we can see. the bar area when you go inside and I believe this was added on later I think it was part of the original structure but it could be wrong so I want to walk behind even though 
We'll come behind if we can see the first time Sally jumps out the window. Just want to get a shot of that window. It's pretty iconic. There it is. Just below the chimney stacks. I do know that this area has been added on. So when she jumped out of the window to head towards the gas station um, and Leatherface looked out, it was that window right there. Creepy cool. Okay, let's walk back around the other side. If you're even mildly a fan of this movie, I suggest you make this trip one day. This is so cool to be here at the house. People are watching me in the windows like, what's this weirdo doing? But I do believe there's a shot of Jerry when he approaches the house, walking along this side that I'll try to line up. Obviously that tree wasn't there. I believe he walks right along this area right there he's coming to look for his friends and of course the super famous front window Sally jumps out at the end to escape is right there very cool and look what your brother did to the door he painted it. <laughs> so we are going to go in and eat in just a second. I just had to get this iconic porch close up. I'm going to walk back here. See if I can get a little bit of the swing set angle. Not exact, but you get the idea. Kurt, Kurt, let's go. Terry Mutman says. Oh, the slow approach. Another the swing set.
down as a result of a special investigation. Grave robbing in Texas is this hour's top news story. An informant led officers of the Muerto County Sheriff's Department to a cemetery just outside the small rural Texas community of Newt early this morning. Officers there discovered what appeared to be a grisly work of art, the remains of a badly decomposed body wired to a large monument. A second body was found in a ditch near the perimeter of the cemetery. Subsequent investigation has revealed at least a dozen empty crypts, and it's feared more will turn up as the probe continues. Deputies report that in some instances, only parts of a corpse had been removed. The head, or in some cases, the extremities removed, the remainder of the corpse left intact. Maldonado refused to give details in the ghoulish case and said only that he did have strong evidence linking the crime to elements outside the state. Area residents have reportedly converged on the cemetery, fearing the remains of relatives have been removed. No suspects are in custody as the investigation at the scene continues. Oil storage units continue to burn out of control at the huge Texaco... Hello? Firefighting units from three Texas cities continue to battle the Holocaust. After officers there discovered what appeared to be a grisly work of art, the remains of a badly decomposed body wired to a large monument. A second body was found in a ditch near the perimeter of the cemetery. Subsequent investigation has revealed at least a dozen empty crypts, and it's feared more will turn up as the probe continues. Deputies report that in some instances, only parts of a corpse had been removed. The head, or in some cases, the extremities removed, the remainder of the corpse left intact. Evidence indicates the robberies have occurred over a period of time. Sheriff Jesus Maldonado refused to give details in the ghoulish case and said only that he did have strong evidence linking the crime to elements outside the state. Area residents have reportedly converged on the cemetery, fearing the remains of relatives have been removed. No okay, guys, so that's going to do it for my super short walk through of the family house here in Kingsland. I had a great brunch. Um, the staff was super nice. The food was amazing. Um, it looks like they're doing a bunch of renovations upstairs, which is good, bad, I don't know. But uh, it's not set up how it was a while back where you could go up where grandpa was sitting and there was a grandpa dummy. I'm sure they have plans to redo something like that, but it looked like they sheet rocked off a large part of the top area. So go watch the much better walkthroughs, the Scott on Tapes, the Tampa Jays, um, all those. There's tons of walkthroughs of this house to see how it was, how it currently is. I just wanted to put my little quick spin on it and give you all something else to watch besides convention walkthroughs. Not that those aren't my favorite, but they don't happen every day. So this is something I could just drive for two hours and come out here. So next, I think we're gonna drive like 30 miles east and go check out Baghdad Cemetery. Okay, so what is up guys? Through the magic of the automobile, we're transported 40 plus miles east to Leander, Texas for the opening scene of 1974, Toby Hooper's classic, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So everybody will recognize this spot, super obvious, but so freaking cool, never gets old. Dun dun dun. Recognize it? Of course you do. <laughs> so there it is, the C.C. Mason Monument. Um, been coming here for a long time, handful of times, taking photos, but never actually done any video. So that's what we're doing today.
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. When you pull into Baghdad Cemetery, you can immediately see this monument. It's probably the tallest one. It is the tallest one. And it's also kind of dead center. So again, if you're a fan of the movie, you gotta get here, see it for yourself. C.C. Mason, in memory of, born May the 5th, 1818. Died May the 2nd. 1865, age 46 years, one month, and 27 days. C.C. Mason, forever in horror film history. Try to line up a few other shots from the movie. Well, first, let's obviously get the opening shot if we can. Come back over here, there was a fake tombstone that they used. Toby and the crew used, mounted right somewhere over in here, that would have had the corpse nubbin sculpture set up. And of course it starts up close. And my arm is not long enough, my phone is not long enough, my gimbal is not long enough, but you get the idea somewhere up in there. Also can't see because it's super bright. But we'll say that's pretty close, right? And uh, so just imagine the corpse is there along with the radio report playing in the background. Daniel Pearl did this awesome slow pan, which was much better than this. But uh, really cool. Okay, let's see what else we can find. So in order to be fully prepared for this um, filming location video, I made the OCD graphic designer in me, made my own little storyboards of shots I wanted to include. There was just five or six, the opening scene, uh, the van pulling up, uh, Sally and the, the guy with the cowboy hat walking through the yard. So I made these super detailed, I mean, not super detailed, but very thorough um, thumbnails on this page. Again, OCD. And uh, it's going to get here, line them up, a little checklist, be super efficient. And guess what? They're back at home. <laughs> I left them like an idiot. So who knows what we're gonna get, right? We'll still get five or six shots. They may or not be anything close from the movie, but whatever, we're here, right? So come to Leander, come to Baghdad Cemetery. Celebrate your Texas Chainsaw Massacre love by visiting the cemetery. So one thing I noticed by watching some of the more thorough videos like uh, Tampa J has a great one. I keep saying that, but this is the most recent. Um, so let's walk down here to where the van would have pulled up. Come on. Okay, so here's the road that um, the van and the kids would have been pulling down, pulled up somewhere right in here. The road was closer, moved further in um, back in 73. There was also a little bit of a ditch here. They would have parked just the other side of the ditch, before the ditch. And uh, like I said, this has been expanded since then. Something cool that Jay pointed out is there originally, you can see the chain link fence, which separated the property, which would have ran pretty much like that. And the way we've deduced that is chain link fence post. So this is more than likely the original 
chain link fence post because the tree has kind of become one with the fence post, so it's probably not worth trying to get that out. <clears throat> and you can't even see it because it's hidden by this partition. And so, so with the kids pulling up to check on Sally and Franklin's grandfather, we could have, would have, could have, would have a view sort of kind of like this. be pretty great if I had my thumbnails right. One of the angles I feel pretty good about is this one. Um, and it's not exact. Maybe more like this. That's how the old drunk guy in the ditch that's uh, mumbling that he hears things, sees things people don't know about, don't talk about. He's pretty much laying right here because even though this tree is in the way now, on the corner of that mausoleum building or whatever that large building is in the middle, corner of that roof can be seen in the upper left of the shot. So it's going to be like this. That's totally worth getting grass all over my shirt. Okay, let's go see if we can find. the Pickle Monument, which is uh, pretty prominent when you see the van. Daniel Pearl does a pan shot across the cemetery. Shot is something like this, with Pickle being right there. So just as you see these cars that are traveling, they're going west, but the ones going east, like that white car, would been very similar to the van. I think they tracked the shot kind of like this and it pulls up. Some of these tombstones get in the way. But that's basically the shot. One of the other shots, again, movie magic is uh, can't really tell, but they walk Sally and the gentleman with the cowboy hat. Monument of C.C. Masons, but you kind of just pick it up more like this. And kind of walking through here. It's so cool that they filmed everything spread out around Austin. And uh, this is what you get. Pretty cool. I highly suggest it. This is one of the most accessible, easiest um, chainsaw locations to come to. C.C. Mason, opening scene, Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. Come check it out. If I have any more fun today, I don't think I'm going to be able to take it.